What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called Rip Out. The developers out of the generosity of their own heart decided to fire over the beta build of the game, the in-dev build. And so we're going to check it out here today and see if it's something that's worth your notice. I've had access to this beta actually for a really long time. Probably six months, seven months even. But this beta right here is the first one that I've played that I really, really felt like the developers were taking on board the stuff that the community was reporting from previous betas. And this is the first build that feels much improved to me. And so I decided to make a video. What is Ripout for those that don't know? Ripout is kind of a curious game, so it's meant for multiplayer. Oh, God. It's meant for multiplayer. However, I'm playing on single player today, and this takes place in kind of like a post-apocalyptic version of the sci-fi future, where out in space, it's not super clear what's happening, but out in space, there are ships flying around, and unfortunately, they get taken over by kind of like this techno, this techno flesh amalgam. You can see it right there sticking out of the vent. Or like over on this side, you can see it growing out of the wall over here and it subsumes. And it basically incorporates everything human and everything technological into like a big, disgusting Akira style Tetsuo mess, basically. And we, our job is to go out into space and to find these craft, because they are a big threat, I would assume, to any population center that they might accidentally crash into, and our job is to go on board to fight all the nasty beasties and disgusting things uh, that are on board. Oh, is that the mainframe back there? I don't know. That's the mainframe. Okay. We've got to fight all the disgusting denizens and techno beasties on board, and we've got to steer the ship into a sun, basically. And we do this over and over again. This is a permadeath game. When you die, you lose all of your bonuses and all the things that you've racked up since you started. And there are kind of little roguelite influences on it. But it's mostly a game where you're scavenging parts and materials and upgrades and things like that from inside of the ship so that you can go to the next ship and have an even better chance at success along the way there's also stuff you're going to unlock, like new firearms, new weapons, new mods for your gun, things like that, that make it a little bit easier to survive on subsequent runs. But for right now, this is a reasonably fresh Marine who only has one mission under his belt. Okay, so let's have a look around here. Uh, this game, the core gameplay loop, is basically you go into Spaceship, and if you look in the top right, it says we've got a current task. Uh, this game is going to spoon-feed you basically randomized objectives that you need to do in various areas of the ship. Everything from interacting with a console, to like blowing something up, to assassinating a certain monster, to like changing the navigational data so that the ship starts flying itself into a sun. All kinds of little things that you've got to do. Oh good, ammo, dude. I'm always out of ammo in this game. I never have ammo, man. So I'm happy to see we've got a lot of ammo to fall back on. Now, if you wanted to check this game out after having watched this video, you can absolutely do that. Take a look down below. I'll have a link for you. The game is not publicly available right now, but they do infrequently post betas that allow everybody to join into a stress test or whatever else. Oh, good. We've got to destroy three terminals and we've got to do it quickly. All right, well, let me see if I can find my way through here so that door doesn't open. Hopefully this area isn't too ridiculously maze-like. It looks like there's one over here, so we'll wipe you out, and we've got some kind of, like, cyber dog over there. There's another one right there, so we'll take that one out. We've got another cyber dog over here. If you look on top of him, he has incorporated a shield module. We're going to need to blast that off of him uh, before we're going to be safe. However, I also have the ability to incorporate stuff. If you take a look at the left side of the screen, I incorporated like a big kill claw, basically, that I can use to strike the enemy with a hyper-powered melee attack. If I wanted to, I could also steal... I think I got a... Oh, there was a turret right there. Okay, let's rescue up. I don't know if the turret's going to shoot me before I res. It's not great, though. I only got 10 seconds left, man. We need to get on this. Where is this console? There's also a big robot right there. He's going to try to get me. It... Oh, there's another dog. Let's get him. Okay. And I think we... Ah, we failed it. That's fine. I just wanted to give you guys some intensity while I was starting on out. That was a rough ship right there. That one had a lot of nasty things, lots of booby traps. But as I was saying, if you wanted to get the game for yourself, the link is down below. They infrequently do betas. You'll also be able to find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live. Now, I've lost all my upgrades. I don't have those anymore. Only the ones that are metagame upgrades, basically. we got to pick a new ship to try to salvage. We've got fine print. We've got a beautiful mind. And it looks like we've got course correction. 
Let's do a beautiful mind and see what a beautiful mind does. This is our home base right here. There are gun crafting areas. There are weapon crafting areas. There's armor crafting areas. In previous betas, those things were activated. I don't know if they're activated in this current beta, or I guess in this closed whatever that the developers have fired on over. I have unlocked some things that I can craft while playing the game. I have them equipped already to make like my... Uh, my absorption ability work better. You may have noticed that my gun is weird and it has like a xenomorph attached to it. That's my pet. Uh, my xenomorph goes out and can steal modules off of enemies and attach them to me so that I can put like a, a plasma launcher on my shoulder. Or I can have a shield generator on me that mitigates damage. Or I can have that big claw that we have on that last run. Alright, let's hit the deck going. Now that I'm not talking quite so much and we're just playing the game, I should play a little bit better. All right, so that's an explosive barrel. Don't hit that. It'll kill you. It's really bad. I don't see anything around. Search through the staff's remain. Oh, there we go. We got ourselves a winner, and down he goes. Dead guy right here. Anything on him? Uh, it looks like he had some ammo. I'll take it. Ammo is always in short supply. Another dead guy over here. He had a crafting material. Okay, is this guy lootable right here? I didn't move that guy. He, like, moved himself. This game is a big fan of jump scares. So frequently when you're walking around, like, a window will explode outwards. Or you'll be walking down a corridor and a door will open on its own. Lots of things to make you jump. The game is focused on being creepy. And, in fact, I think the environmental design is what the game does the best. It needs to have more variety and it needs to be brought up, but I am pleased with the way the game looks as of right now. It's definitely got like the vibe that you would catch from something like, you know, The Thing or Event Horizon or like any of those things that have people kind of marooned in space. This right here is an upgrade console. It gives you a run uh, a run-only upgrade, basically, so it looks like I can make my pet attach a grenade to somebody. It looks like I can increase the critical strike damage for shooting things in the head, or I can lower the cooldown on my pet. Having having my Xenomorph attach grenades to people is, like, one of the coolest things ever, so I'll go ahead and take it. Um, we can proceed right now. We can move along, but I find that it's usually a good idea to just kind of pan and scan around and see if there's anything in these areas. My flashlight's going out on me. So we're headed into the Tesla coil area. Okay. These ships are procedural. They are randomized. And actually, I have had some ships that were really hard to navigate. Like, really labyrinthine ships that have come up. Usually, they're fairly straightforward. But every now and again, you get one that's got, like, you know, ventilation systems that run in between areas. And it's got, like, kind of like an underground area you can crawl through. It's got, like, all kinds of weird things happening. And that's when it tends to get sticky, especially when you've got timers. Destroy a corrupted core. We got a dog. All right, we'll drop him real quick. Let me grab those. Looks like what we're trying to destroy is over this way. Got another dog right there. We got another upgrade on the opposite side, too. Is there another one? Thought I heard gooey sounds. That's the core. So that's what's got to go. I love that animation right there for reloading the gun. How, like, the xenomorph that comprises your gun is, like, greedy for more ammo. And it's like, ah, give me it. Ooh, we got a claw over there. Come here, little buddy. All right, so we've got our little shoulder claw. I can now melee people to save ammo if I want to. Uh, little environmental things like that right there. You can't cross it. It's going to hurt you. However, you can find a power switch around here that will kill the power on the floor, and then you can cross those wires right there. The downside is it's going to kill all the lights and everything else, too. And so it may kill the lights, it may kill doors, it may make things not work. Anything that's hooked up to the power grid, basically. Melee damage, crit upgrade, stamina capacity. Give me the crit upgrade. Take the crit upgrade. Anytime you see a window that's cracked, you can shoot it out. However, a window that is contiguous and not cracked, uh, those ones tend to be bulletproof. So, what was that? Oh, that little trap door opened up there. It would be cool if the developers looked at, like, Deep Rock Galactic, and sometimes these right here had a little descending claw that would grab you and pull you up into it and deal a bunch of damage and slam you against the ceiling. That'd be rad. Like, I think that's a really good idea, in fact, that when one of those traps opens up, you kind of got to look up in there and see if there's, like, a... A grabby claw that's going to try to suck you up into the ceiling and mess you up. 
Like I said, environmental design seems to be the game's strength, and so leaning into that, I've been trying to formulate suggestions that build on that idea and make it better. There's not a lot of variety in the hull types that you're inside of in this game. I would like to see that increase. I assume that it will as the game's development gets further and further along. Uh, but, you know, industrial ships, military ships... Uh, things that decidedly look like what they are. As of right now, it just seems like a generic ship that might be for the military, might be for random passengers. It's kind of hard to tell. All you know is everybody's getting converted into wall flesh masts or like into flesh masses over here. One thing that I think would also be a really good idea is make these walls talk to people, right? This is sucking human beings into it. You can see a face right there. How cool would it be if the faces, they tracked you as you walked by and they all looked at you and their eyes followed you? And, like, going back to something like, uh, let's say, the original System Shock. Perfect example here. One of the things that was really unsettling about System Shock that this game does not have is the environmental feedback. In System Shock, it was immersive because you believed it was immersive based on the feedback that the monsters gave you while you were cruising around the levels. And so I distinctively remember getting shivers down my spine when I was like 13 or 14 years old playing System Shock because the enemies in that game did not want to attack you. They were being controlled by the machines that Shodan had installed inside of them. And so they would do things like moan apologies, and they would moan things like, KILL ME! as they were trying to beat you to death with a pipe. You know, they, they would apologize for trying to murder you while you were murdering them in a very, very hushed sort of terrifying tone. Things like that, like the walls saying, kill me when you walk by and the faces following you and like hands grasping out for aid, you know, stuff like that, like begging for help. That's what makes a horror game like this that's building on kind of that salvaging idea very, very creepy and like hits you on like a gut body horror level where you start to feel like that empathy, like, oh, you poor, like, I want to put you out of your misery, you know what I mean? Like, oh, God. Uh, that's that's missing here, but I think it should be in the game in a bunch of voice lines You know like I'm talking on the level we just saw bolt gun for example One of the things that I thought was utterly incredible is the developers were watching me stream bolt gun And they said that they for whatever reason put like a hundred plus different taunts in that game That's the level that I'm talking about is just you know loads and loads and loads of these little one-liners Oh, he's got a shield on him shit Okay, fall back, fall back, fall back, fall back. We've got to get that thing off of him. So we got that off of him, and it exploded him on the way out. All right, we're good. The music's still going, so I don't know if we're okay or if we're still being hunted right now. Love that animation right there. That's a new addition. Previous betas did not have that, the chomping jaws on screen. The chomping jaws on screen are letting you know that you can deploy your pet again, and that's a really awesome piece of visual feedback. Uh, I, that's exactly what I mean. As I was talking about, I decided to cover this because it, fi it feels like they're bringing on board customer feedback like hard with this build uh, for the first time. Like all the other builds that I've played, they, they've been saying like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll look into that. We'll look into that. But it's clear they're still getting like core gameplay mechanics like ironed in and like put in. Now's the point where I'm starting to see them add the things that people are suggesting. And the suggestions have been very, very good. And so I'd love to add to that. We could go back to the previous transition and grab that bandage and that ammo before we move on. And I think it might not be a terrible idea. Well, we can't get back to get the ammo, but I was able to heal myself up. There are some fun upgrades in this game too, not just flat passives. Uh, so things like my pet attaching grenades to people before it comes back to me is a really cool idea. I had another one that siphoned health off the enemy while it was attached to him, which was super nice. Honestly, probably one of my favorite mods I've ever had so far. Uh, we need to go this way is where we need to go. Ah, uh, Dude, stop that. Come on. Got me again, man. Normally, I'm not a very jumpy person in games like these, but for whatever reason... This game makes it work. Like, this one's a little bit janky, and it's a little bit wonky, and it's really early in its development. You know what I mean? But this game has something in it that makes me jumpy, which I like about it, and I can't quite put my finger on what it is. Oh, the chair bit me! So there's environmental objects around that can damage you. Uh, there's robots that will take a swing at you. There's turrets, as you saw when I got murdered in the previous excursion. There's chairs that have been consumed by whatever the techno blight is. Just uh, keep your head on a swivel. You never know in this game. Bad things tend to happen a lot. This little area with the slats gave me big time Ridley Scott vibes, like huge alien Giger vibes, basically. All we need now is like an aperture door. 
I call them butthole doors, but everybody told me that that's impolite and they're called aperture doors. Uh, clear the infested matter. Okay, where's the infested matter at? Over here. Let's look for threats first. I don't know what's in here. I do... Oh, I want him. That's a gun. Give it to me. There we go. I now have a gun on my shoulder, so that'll help out with ammo too. All right, we wiped that out. They upgraded, since the last time I played the game, they upgraded the sound effect that this gun makes, too. The last time I played the game, it had, like, a super generic, like, knockoff Star Wars sounding, like, pew. It almost sounded like somebody was saying pew with their mouth when it was going off. I would attach a grenade to him real fast. Power up the machine. Oh. Down goes the doggy. Oh, he got... Nice! So, good news here. Uh, so, with that dog right there, what the... You know the claw that I had that allowed me to melee earlier? Uh, what does that claw do? Well, it allows you to melee, but it also has a secondary side effect. It stops any other parasite from attaching to you. It grabs it and throws it away. That guy had it on his back, but when I threw my pet at him, it didn't stop my pet because he was electrified. That means the developers realized that it was unfair that under a, a taser load, basically, the biological organism was still able to get rid of your parasite and use its ability, and so they actually plan for that, and it allows you to kill the enemy using a pet so long as they're electrified, even if they have a claw on their head. We're getting a little low on ammo right now. Reload me. I need more shoulder cannon. We're going to be out of ammo really soon. A crafting component. I do have a little bit of pistol, but the pistol, like, really sucks. Like, it's, like, super not good. So I wouldn't rely on it too much. Man. I wouldn't rely on it too much. We need to kill the power. There we go. Power's killed. I don't know if that's lootable. It kind of looked lootable for a second. Now that the power's out, I should be able to go across these wires over here and grab the goodies that that guy dropped. There we go. We got a little bit of health missing, so I'm not against grabbing some. I don't know if this room's accessible over here. No, it's not a working room. Oh, I see what we got going on. Okay, so I need to activate this from right here. And we've got an upgrade terminal, but the upgrade terminal doesn't work when the power's out. Damage reduction, support... I want the damage reduction. We get hit, like, really hard right now. Like, there are some enemies that can one-shot us. You guys haven't seen, like, the bigger, nastier enemies. And any, like, damage reduction that I can get right now is okay by me. Any ammo I could track down would be good, too. Ah, oh, it's locked. We gotta find a key card. So some of these are closed until you find a key card. I like that, though. More of that. More environmental interactions. So, for example, things that won't open while a certain node hasn't been interacted with, or things of that nature, like lockdowns and whatnot. I need to find the exit. I'm going to put the power back on. Just so I can see. And then we'll turn the core back on real quick. Okay, move out. One thing I would like to see too is I think it'd be a really good idea. In fact, I would be willing to do this. But the game having like an operator. So you know like tank from, from the Matrix... Or, like, really any other game that has, like, military operators. You always have somebody talking into your earpiece. It would be cool if you had that in this game, too, where there was, like, a central authority that assigns an operator to you since you're doing a public service by eliminating these ships. And, you know, when you get on board, they give you, like, a little blurb based on, like, tags that are assigned to each ship that are like, okay, so it looks like this one was a public transport that was taking colonists over to this moon or whatever else. Uh, keep an eye out. This one should be a little bit less dangerous than what you're used to, but that doesn't mean there won't be surprises. And, like, they should announce, like, we've got to obtain an insane brain. So in that case, the operator would be like, yeah, so I've got news. There's a brain on this deck, and CEO says he wants you to bring it back for research purposes. Uh, get to it. You know, like, little things like that that basically add, once again, to a little bit more immersion. Like, having someone talk in your ear while you're in a stressful situation tends to ramp up the stress a little bit higher, too, because you're trying to focus on multiple things at once while some things are actively trying to kill you 
All right, we got them. We got them. We got them. We're good. Those things won't harm me. Ooh, there's a turret up there, and I can't... I don't know if it's broken yet. There we go. We killed it. I think if we turn off the power, it kills the turrets too, but I'd have to experiment with it. Cracked window. Old rifle. Any ammo? What was that? Uh, this is clearly an armory, but I don't see any ammo or anything inside of here. It looks like it got cleared out. Somebody got got next to the coffee machine. He died how he lived. Fisting a cup of coffee. Oh, there's one of the big dogs. Okay, throw that on him. Hey, the grenade got him. Very nice. Ooh, he dropped a bunch of ammo, too. Hell yeah. Let me get that. That's like a full lock and load. They have increased the amount of ammo. The last time I played the game, you ran out of ammo within like the first floor or two. Every single time. Very quickly. This time around, the ammo seems much better balanced. Like, you still run out if you're not picking and choosing your shots. And you do have to use the full breadth of your abilities like your symbiote and whatnot in order to be successful. But I don't feel like I'm just starved for ammo the entire run like I did last time. Okay, bomb got him. Oh yeah, the enemies have glowing weak spots. This guy didn't have them, but the enemies, you don't necessarily shoot them in the head. So this game is incorporating some ideas from something like uh, Dead Space as well, where sometimes those enemies right there, they'll have like tumors growing out of them in randomized spots. They're not always in the same place. And you've got to shoot the tumor and they'll die faster. They've got like a giant armor increase to anywhere that is not the tumor. That guy didn't have it, so we could just open up on him, but some of them do. Yeah, I'll take some more ammo. I'll take a shield module too. Cool. I am now officially shielded. So we've got to get a brain in here. Sorry, I like to go through the level and sweep for enemies before I look for the objective. Uh, looking for the objective while being attacked by things is not my forte. I don't deal with stress well. I'm a I'm an angry, stressed out person. Uh, crafting materials and heals over here. I'll take that. Anything in there? Nope, we're good. Was this the room that I already went into, or is this like the other half? Oh yeah, this is a different room. This is a different armory. Okay. No armor unlock or anything inside of here, which is kind of a bummer, but that's fine. Let's go over. It's upstairs. All right, I can do that. Let him have it. Ammo's been replaced. Looks like there's some kind of secrety secret over there if you can jump it. Unfortunately, we've got like a collision plane right there. So I think I gotta jump from like a designated point maybe. But yeah, there's like a unlockable module right there or something uh, that I could craft in my base that would make our character just flatly better forever from here on out. Flashlight's looking a little better. That guy got done in during bedtime. Don't see anything too wild and crazy. Oop, out. Okay. Yep. So after a look, after looking at it, I think we just walk around the outside edge. Oh, another big dog fall back. Yeah, I was gonna say he's got a shield, so I don't know exactly how this is gonna go. The reactivity's better too. Last time I played the game, the mobs did not react to being shot at all. Do you react to... Oh, I was going to ask him if he reacts to being shot now because he was nodding, but unfortunately the bit got ruined by despawn rates. However, the enemies do react to being shot. They do flinch. They did not used to do that. I'm pointing these things out because, like, I want you guys to know that there's, like, tangible progress being made on this. That, like, when I've been playing these betas over the last year or so, I've had major issues with the game every single time. And this patch right here... Oh, that was the objective. It wasn't a mod. Uh, this is the first patch where I, I feel like the game is like so much improved from the last time I played it. That doesn't mean that there's still not things that like I think could be hugely improved with the presentation and whatnot, but it does make me feel really, really good about the game. 
Because the games like this that tend to not care and are just trying to get a bunch of people on board to get some sales going, they don't make improvement like that. Like, they mostly stick to their guns of being bad and they just stay bad forever. Uh, this game, clearly, pe they're working on the things that people are pointing out that they dislike. Uh, because when I played this game last, the gunplay was bad. Uh, the the game barely worked. It was constantly crashing and falling apart. The enemies just kind of ran around and didn't react to being shot, which made your guns feel even floatier and even worse than they already did. There was no ammo to come by, so, like, you couldn't shoot enough anyways for the guns to feel terrible. Like, the game would crash almost every time you left a lobby, and now it's working like a charm. The only thing that I'd say still needs to be worked on is the guns. The guns still feel wispy, and they still feel a little marshmallowy to me. Like, they don't feel quite as snappy or as plosive or as chunky as they should. But it did help a lot that the enemies react to being shot now. That was a big, I think, portion of the guns not feeling good, too. So they've got half the formula solved. They just got to get the rest solved. You've got two shields on you, man. Well, I hope my grenade gets them both. That guy's got the tumor. You can see it right there. Yeah, he's not a tumor. Yeah. I'd like to pet him one more time. There we go. Let's get him with the pet grenade one more time. I'm going to get a gap going. Shoot him in his little ankle till he falls over. Oh, there's another one upstairs, too. Okay, we got a little... What was that? Oh, dude. Come on. There's one behind me now, too? All right, run, 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 run. I might be making this worse by running around. But it's hard to say. All right, get him. Oh, he's got a... Okay, all right, fair. He's got a toxic module. That guy's got to go first. These toxic modules, he spawns little grenades, and they track you and they chase you. Get him. There we go. He should be down. I think we're all right. But we were probably going to die the next time he put out grenades, and I just ruined our entire health bar by stepping on electrical wires. Oh, no, dude. He incorporated... Oh, this might be it. Get him again. Come on, die. There we go. All better. All right. We've got much less things to worry about now. A little bit of ammo to top off the old magazine, too, and a whole bunch of crafting materials. Let's get it. Oh, you can kind of hear a little voice from that one right there. Ah, oh, dude, come on. Okay, so we got to turn that off. That'll hurt you right there. Don't get steam burned. That's actually a threat, so don't walk through that. I don't even know what I'm... I think we're leaving right now. I think we're actually evacing, but the last room when we go back to the ship is usually pretty bad and pretty aggressive. So, like, I'm trying to find a way... we got to find a power switch. We can get an upgrade. Yeah, little things like having these screens right here flash, it hurts. You know, in between, like, these little readouts that you're getting from the game's core and whatnot. Things like make it stop flickering real fast so that you don't even know if you quite saw it. These little screens kind of doing the same thing where, like, they flicker with, like, a normal DOS prompt most of the time, but every now and again, it's like a picture of a face, like, screaming behind kind of, like, digital, almost cascade, matrix-style binary, kind of, you know, like a data cascade almost. Lots of little improvements they could make to making the game feel much, much more creepy, but to be fair to the game, it is getting me right now. Like, I do feel amped up. Like, I do feel paranoid. I do feel like I'm hunted. I do feel like I'm trying to move fast, you know? What you got, man? You all right? Oh, all the bullets in the world. You're my new best friend. I'm sorry you're dead, but thank you for putting all that ammo in your prison pocket, man. I really appreciate that. Oh, that one did. That one had like a little face that flickered in it for a second. Since we found a key card, I think we can also open up this chest that was over here. And I'm really, really hoping that the chest has some kind of heal or something inside of it. Okay, so let's get our upgrade. Pet damage up. Yep, I'll take it. Come on, health. Oh, that's bad. Okay, so... Strong chance we get one tapped in the next room if I mess anything up, and then we, get, we go home with, you know, nothing. Okay, well, here we go. I 
I don't have any of the symbiotes attached to me right now. I wish that I had the symbiotes attached to me. That one's like probably the worst of the symbiotes because I don't want to be near the near the enemy at all. The plus side is at least we're not doing this with crappy health right now. I think that's it. Now we can get to the shuttle. There's a bandage over there too. A little tiny bit overstimulated at the moment by all the noises and things that are happening. That's nice, though. I'll take it. And they're crafting material over there, too. All right, let's get on the shuttle and get out of here. Let's go! We've completed our mission. And that was an easy solo mission in the game of Ripout. Now, this game is planned for squad gameplay, and there are going to be, like, bigger, nastier ships that you need a team to get over. But the game is also, it has a dedicated offline solo mode, from what I can tell. I don't think the game needs to be attached to the internet in order to function properly, and I think the developers promised that. Uh, that there would be an offline single-player mode, which in today's modern video game environment is kind of like a huge deal. Like, almost everything is almost permanently rooted to the internet so that they can David Harvest the hell out of you. And so I appreciate the fact that there's a developer out there that's like, oh, yeah, you can play by yourself with no internet connection if you want. Go for it. And we didn't really reclaim anything interesting right there, but I can show you some of the nodes. This locker right here is where you swap out your armor. Uh, there are different armors in the game. I played during a beta where they were exclusively testing out different armor types, and when you logged in, you already had, like, a bunch like basically you would do one mission and you would unlock like most of the armors in the game after doing like one or two missions and different armors do different things so they have different like bonuses so this one right here makes our gun fire faster you know like other armors will have different sets like your pet recharges faster or your gun deals more damage and they have different appearances too so if you're playing in multiplayer people can see what set you're wearing and like what you're running it's early, it's primitive, and there's still definitely big areas for improvement, but this beta right here is the first one where I saw, like, big-time meaningful improvement in the game. And so I think the developers are taking all the advice on board, and I, I think they're applying it. I think if they can get the shooting feeling a little bit better, that's going to be a major focus, I think. And then a lot of it's just going to be environmental stuff. And then from there, just making sure the game has tons of stuff to craft, tons of stuff to play around with. Oh, yeah, I got team damage increase. I forgot about that. If you find rare components, you can take them upstairs and you can put them in a gambling machine to get more blueprints. So you can, like, put them into this little slot machine right here. And it'll give you a blueprint, but the price goes up every time you play. So that's another way that the game feeds you extra blueprints just in case you have bad luck and don't find very many uh, when you're inside, you know, the crafts. I can't jump to the next sector until I do a quest. What quest do I have? Apparently I can shower, so that's pretty cool. I can get all the nasty booty stink off me from, like, techno horrors. You can interact with the toilets. It's a nice little... I don't think a toilet's supposed to make that sound, but then again, I'm not a toileologist, you know what I mean? I can't figure out where I get quests from. It says I gotta do a quest before I can jump to the next system, but I'm not super sure where you get quests from. Maybe it's the big yellow indicator. Maybe I've been, like, failing to do it while I'm on each of these missions. I don't know. Because there does seem to be, like, a, a prevailing thing that I'm supposed to do while I'm on board. Like, it looked like there was two objectives. Let me go look real fast. We still got like a minute or two that I can play around. Oh yeah, there's a lip on the ship right here that you get stuck on. You're gonna wanna smooth that out. It's been there for as long as I've been beta testing the game and you gotta jump to get over and it feels janky. Pick up a poster, apparently, is the quest on Sephiroth 87, which is the current ship we're going through. I don't know if I have like a marker for where the poster might be. So I think we might just have to track down and look for the poster. That's the trans... Okay. There's the laptop that we needed for this area. Nothing inside of here. We need to hack a terminal by the time this power goes down. Where's the terminal at? Oh, it's right here. That's easy. Sometimes you get stuff in really weird spots, man. Uh, so I'm going to go damage reduction first on this run, just because it's nice to have. 
I'm really hoping they do like deep dive missions too. If you've ever played Deep Rock Galactic, like deep dive missions that are like two hours long and like you get really stuck in, you know what I mean? Like for like end game content and whatnot. I don't know, man. I see I see promise here if they can get things smoothed out. This is definitely like a game that I've wanted for a long time where you go into procedural spaceships and just like salvage. And Astronauts is the only game that lets me do that. And so I'm glad to see someone else playing around with the derelict Space Hulk idea, since it seems to be a dead genre nowadays. But yeah, Rip Out. Check out the next beta. It's not a perfect game. It's definitely still got a lot of work left to go. But I was very pleased by this build compared to the last couple that I played. And I thought that warranted a video. Because uh, the improvement between this build and the last one I played probably three or four months ago and also the one that I played three or four months before that is enormous. And I think that deserves at least a little bit of applause in the form of me making a video, despite the fact that the game has kind of wispy shooting and there's lots of other things they could do to make the game more immersive and more awesome. I think it could use another mechanic or two on the in-between game, like flying around and whatnot in your ship. But we'll see. I'll see y'all later. Thanks for being here. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were fiddling around with a title called Rip Out that I've had my eye on for a while, but I finally got to make content on it. I'll see y'all next time. Thank you for being here. And that's about all I've got for you. Bye, folks.